I wanted to take a moment to reflect on Hurricane Harvey and just say that to anyone who was affected by the hurricane, if you've lost your home, uh, if you've lost a loved one, I am so sorry. My heart completely goes out to you because, I mean, the seriousness of this hurricane can't be overstated. And uh, it's just looking at some of the photos that are coming out of Houston, it it's so heartbreaking. I mean, you've got the Houston Convention Center packed with 9,000 people. And uh, when you look at some of the before and after images of Houston before the storm and then Houston after the storm, it really gives you a sense as to just how serious the storm actually is. So, I mean, we can't leave fellow Americans behind. And that goes without saying, right? So if you're able to give anything, I'll include a link to the Red Cross donation page in the description box. And if you're listening on iTunes, you can visit redcross.org slash donate slash hurricane dash Harvey. And again, anything helps. Don't think that a small donation is too small. I mean, any little bit of money you can send will be greatly appreciated. But besides just talking about the devastation of Hurricane Harvey, I think it's still important for us to state the obvious. Hurricane Harvey is a symptom of climate change. And if we don't act now, things are going to get worse. And even if we're still dealing with the situation, certainly we need to do what we can to help those affected. But we've got to talk about climate change. And I think that Naomi Klein of The Intercept had a really great article talking about just how important this discussion really is. So she states, now is exactly the time to talk about climate change and all the other systemic injustices from racial profiling to economic austerity that turn disasters like Harvey into human catastrophes. Turn on the coverage of the Hurricane Harvey and the Houston flooding and you'll hear lots of talk about how unprecedented this kind of rainfall is, how no one saw it coming so no one could adequately prepare. What you will hear very little about is why these kinds of unprecedented, record-breaking weather events are happening with such regularity that record-breaking has become a meteorological cliché. In other words, you won't hear much, if any, talk about climate change. This, we are told, is out of a desire not to politicize a still unfolding human tragedy, which is an understandable impulse. But here's the thing. Every time we act as if an unprecedented weather event is hitting us out of the blue, as some sort of act of God that no one foresaw, reporters are making a highly political decision. It's a decision to spare feelings and avoid controversy at the expense of telling the truth, however difficult. Because the truth is that these events have long been predicted by climate scientists. Warmer oceans throw out more powerful storms. Higher sea levels mean those storms surge into places they never reached before. Hotter weather leads to extremes of precipitation, long dry periods interrupted by massive snow or rain dumps, rather than the steadier, predictable patterns most of us grew up with. The records being broken year after year, whether for drought, storm surges, wildfires, or just heat, are happening because the planet is markedly warmer than it has been since record keeping began. Covering events like Harvey while ignoring those facts, failing to provide a platform to climate scientists who can make them plain, all while never mentioning President Donald Trump's decision to withdraw from the Paris Climate Accords, fails in the most basic duty of journalism, to provide important facts and relevant context. It leaves the public with the false impression that these are disasters without root causes, which also means that nothing could have been done to prevent them, and that nothing can be done now to prevent them from getting much worse in the future. So I really couldn't have said it better myself. I mean, hurricanes are nothing new. They've always happen. This is not a phenomenon that will go away, but certainly the severity for all of the hurricanes that we've seen in recent years, it's increased. And also the frequency has increased as well. So this is becoming a more and more common phenomenon. And we have to address the elephant in the room. This is happening because of climate change and our unwillingness to act. And no matter how much praise Donald Trump is able to receive based on his response, well, that doesn't matter if he's unwilling to actually address climate change because in burying our heads in the sand and pretending like this isn't the result of climate change, then we're going to have more hurricanes in the future. This devastation that we're seeing in Houston will occur around the country and around the world. And this is just one of the many consequences of climate change. I mean, when it comes to climate change, um, more extreme, unpredictable weather patterns will be the norm. 
So this is something that we have to talk about. We have to address this as a species, because if we don't actually deal with climate change in a meaningful way, then Houston is only the beginning and certainly it's going to get worse. We don't know all the consequences that will come to fruition when uh, climate change uh, continues to heat up our planet, but it's not going to be good. We see more ex more species going extinct. We see increasing ocean acidification, which will affect the entire food chain. We see coral reefs dying. We see uh, desertification. This is really scary. So as a species, we've got to come together and address climate change in a really meaningful way. I mean, when it came to the ozone layer, humanity did come together. We had the Montreal Protocol and we actually stopped the ozone layer and was able to uh, heal it. So, I mean, it was it was increasingly bad. Uh, scientists predicted that it would cause skin cancer in the future and other problems, but we came together and we fixed it. Now, part of the reason is that there was actually a lot of business interests that were on board and behind it, and the reason why we haven't seen much action on climate change is because the business community, well, I mean, especially the oil and gas industry, they have a vested interest in keeping the status quo the way it is. I mean, in keeping our dependence on the oil and gas industry, not only will these oil and gas companies stay in business, but politicians will continue to receive campaign contributions from them. So unfortunately, the only way I really feel like we're actually going to act on climate change is if uh, another in industry emerges and challenges the oil and gas industry. And this has to be the green industry. So I think that it's only a matter of time until we see, see a really huge economic boon with regard to uh, clean technology and once those companies become big enough to form monopolies and buy politicians i think that's the only time we're actually going to see change uh, when it comes to u.s policy towards climate change and that's sad to say because it'll take corruption ultimately to get us to respond to climate change in a meaningful way but again please uh donate to red cross if you can redcross.org and certainly to anyone affected in houston please 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 stay safe my heart goes out to you support this podcast by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash humanist report